Good morning, my fabulous fangs. Welcome back or welcome to the cavern. I'm Kasara, the host of this channel. Here I discuss true crime cases, history, horror reviews, and gaming. We finally got the 3D printer up and running after a year of figuring out what works, what doesn't work, along with calibrating the machine and everything else. So I'm hoping in the next few months I'll be sharing some 3D printing videos for all of you. They'll most likely be in the short section since I don't see them being that long and I can also speed up the print. If any of that sounds interesting to you, be sure to subscribe and join the fangdom. Today's topic is satanic cults, which all may be from the satanic panic back in the 80s. And this topic actually might span for a few weeks because I found a lot of information on this and I'm curious what is and isn't true about these cases. So what started my research down this rabbit hole is I heard about a cult during the 70s that supposedly were Satanists and believed they were vampires that were kidnapping children and doing horrible things to these children. Well, Funny thing about the 60s and 70s, devil worship was in the air, which fed into the satanic panic of the 80s. Part of what probably started it was the fact that the satanic church started around this time period. So I believe it started in 1966 and the church was in the news quite frequently uh, for various things. Um, I guess there was a wedding that was held at the church um, I think that was in 1967 or eight. And the creator of the church did go on, I think like a talk show. He also wrote a book, um, all kinds of stuff. So devil worship was in the air and people in the United States are very Christian, especially during the fifties and sixties. Uh, there was a big hold. Uh, the fear of Satan is very real, not just in the States. And of course, Christianity has spread. It's everywhere. Uh, just some cult, uh, countries, it's not as big as it is in others. But since the Satanic Church started in the States, any strange murders were blamed on Satanism, even if the individuals didn't believe or worship Satan. Unfortunately, people fear what they don't understand and they villainize it and spread their pop propaganda about it. Uh, take what's going on in the media lately. There's a lot of propaganda out there right now about all kinds of stuff. <laughs> the closest cult that I could find based on the story I heard was about the Finders cult. In 2019, the FBI actually declassified nearly 650 pages relating to the group. The cult was allegedly involved in international child trafficking, uh, satanic worship, and mind control techniques. This criminal ring occurred in the late 80s. It began when six children were reported to police at a park in Tallahassee, Florida. The young children were reported to be filthy, covered in bites and scratches. The children were accompanied by two well-dressed men, which of course is going to make this whole thing stand out. When the men failed to give proper identification or even explain who the parents of the children were, they were arrested and the children were brought in for questioning. The men were less cooperative during all of this, but the police did find that the group were from Washington, D.C., not Tallahassee, Florida. Uh, investigators soon found that the finders were in different states and corporations, not just in the states, but internationally as well, which is kind of terrifying. The children that were questioned for the most part were nonverbal, apart from the oldest child, Mary. The children were unaware of modern technology, electricity, hot water, and were curious about the most simplest contraptions like staplers. They did not attend school. The men were their teachers. When the police asked Mary what the men taught them, she said how to play games. They lived with their mothers, supposed mothers. Um, it's not known if they actually were their biological moms or not, although they were not allowed inside the house. They lived in the van or in tents outside. They traveled often, sometimes by plane. Supposedly, the trips away from their mothers was to wean them from them, especially the youngest ones. Officers noted that the youngest children did not have diapers on and were taught that the ground outside was their bathroom. 
One apparently used the floor in the questioning room instead of asking to use the bathroom during one of the, um, I wouldn't say interrogations, but one of the officers was basically talking to the children and the child just had to go and went. The officers questioned who the leader of the group was and they replied, the game caller. The children were all malnourished and one child actually consumed eight bananas and an orange but still remained hungry. There was a belief that there might have been satanic worship based on what the lead investigators found inside the van. Since the children were originally from D.C., the FBI was called in to help the Tallahassee police. The FBI began working with the Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department. A judge signed a search warrant for the two D.C. property locations known to belong to the finders, which was a local warehouse and a duplex apartment. Police found brochures, photos, books, all on mind control, and they also found computers. The mothers were found and contacted. Five women claimed to be biological mothers to all six children. They claimed they knew the men and trusted them. They also stated that the children had not been kidnapped. They also spoke to the press and insisted they were in no means part of a satanic group, but were a communal group of intellectuals. A doctor examined the children and determined two of the six had physical indications of assault. The doctor also found bite marks, although they couldn't determine if the bite was from a child or an adult. A behavioral scientist indicated that the children behaved similarly to those who had been institutionalized for a prolonged period of time. When the children were placed in protective custody, a series of disturbing and violent phone calls were made to the agency, threatening bombing and other violence. From the raids on the two DC properties, the photographs found were of men dressed in white robes holding a goat head. Children were engaging in bloodletting of the goat and other disturbing images. Some speculate satanic significance since Baphomet depicts the devil as a goat in many artifacts and literature of Luciferian occult symbology. The mothers claimed this was done for hands-on educational purposes and the meat of the goat was eaten. There was a vast amount of informational documents on techniques into mind control and child trafficking from the evidence found. The finders in Nethers, Virginia was also raided. Two weeks after the initial investigation began, it was announced that the MPD and Tallahassee police were dropping all charges due to insignificant evidence. The doctor who performed the examination on the children went back on her word and stated publicly there was no conclusive evidence of any assault. Local police claimed after examining the situation more, it was all a misunderstanding, and there did not seem to be any worry about child trafficking or devil worship. It was all just part of the satanic panic that seemed to be going around, and although the group did not adhere to traditional societal male and female roles of raising children, nothing illegal was happening to warrant charges. The FBI eventually learned that the finders groups traveled to places like North Korea, Russia, and Vietnam by searching passport travel records. The FBI requested information from the State Department regarding their passports and who approved the travel. The State Department eventually replied that there did not seem to be any violation with any of the passports. The CIA was made aware of the FBI and local police department's investigation into the group, uh, group and claimed to be conducting their own investigations into the matter, but refused to cooperate by sharing information with the FBI or local police departments. At one point, it is recorded that a member of the FBI asked a member of the CIA if the investigation was treading on anyone's toes, to which the CIA agent replied, sort of. So the leader of the group was identified as Marion Petty. His wife, Isabel, was confirmed to be a member of the CIA for 21 years. He was known as the Game Caller and claims to have been a student of life. He taught and learned the game. From this information, there has been a lot of conspiracy theories related to the CIA and the government. I'll leave everything up to you to decide. Uh, I'm going to be leaving links in the description for those of you who would like to learn more about this case, what the game entailed. I wasn't going to disclose any of that because it's pretty disturbing, to say the least, what these children were subjected to. 
I'm honestly surprised that this was going on and how the Finders was in various parts of the world. It's disturbing to think about and what these children were put through. I can't imagine what each area did because I can't see the leader being in every single one of these branches. He probably appointed a substitute leader or a person to look after the group in his stead while he went everywhere else. Uh, if you know what happened to the group, because um, I couldn't actually find if they ever faced criminal charges. And I'm actually hoping that they did because it's appalling what they did to these children. If you find any information and would like to disclose it, feel free to do so in the comments. Let me know all your thoughts on the satanic panic, the this cult specifically, or anything in between. Thank you so much for watching. Later tonight, I'll be sharing my review of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark because I finally was able to watch it again after... <laughs> A few months because I actually did not remember a lot of it. I remember bits and pieces but not enough to actually give a full review. Tuesday I'll be returning to Edge of Eternity. I'm hoping it gets more entertaining because the first playthrough was boring as hell. Can't wait for the upcoming content. Click the bell icon to be the first notified. Thank you again. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Take care until next time. Bye everyone!